What's up, guys? It's Tim here with Gutter Growth. I got Jimmy Fazikas in front of us. Hopefully, I pronounced that right. Uh, Jimmy, perfect. why don't you? Perfect, right? Why don't yep. you tell us about yourself, Jimmy? What do you got going on over there? Hey, everybody. My name is Jimmy Fazikas. Um, I'm with Blue Water Exteriors. Uh, we do seamless gutters. Um, I'm actually right now. I'm on my back porch, enjoying the weather here in South Alabama. We're at the beach. Um, just trying to uh, spend some time with Tim uh, and see if we can talk shop. Good deal. Yeah, I, I got a good chance to meet Jimmy over at the bar at the uh, rooftop with all the gutter guys <laughs> and uh, at the huge convention. So that was fun. Uh, oh, yeah. To meet you there. Yeah. Um, yeah. Jimmy, what do you got going on with, uh, tell us a little bit about your background. When did you start in gutters and how did you get to where you're at now? Yeah. So I've been in this industry uh, myself since I was 13. I'll be pushing 48 uh, in January of uh, uh, this coming year. Um, been so that's a, almost 35 years in the industry. My dad and grandfather were in the industry before. Uh, so I'm actually third generation. Oh, wow. Uh, so we got a long line, of, long line of history in the gutter business. We were uh, the first seamless gutter machine in Alabama in the 70s. Um, really? So is that, is that your dad uh, and or? I actually, yeah, my dad, my dad, and my granddad. Yeah. They bought a Knudsen. Actually, my dad bought the Knudsen machine. We were, uh, they were in uh, uh, New Jersey and brought it down from New Jersey to Alabama. And when I was six months old, I was moved down to Alabama, South Alabama, or actually North Alabama. And uh, I was in the little bassinet in between the gutter truck and the seats there. So I was actually brought down in a gutter truck. In 1976, <laughs> you were born so in the business. I was born in the gutter business for sure. You're so. made for this. <laughs> I am. I guess so. Yeah, good deal, man. So, what do you what do you got going on now? Man, we uh, so the main the main thing with us, uh, I've been in the gutter business my whole life. I bought my uh, father out when I was 20 years old. Um. In 1996, I bought this from my granddad had already passed away. And my father uh, said he's moving down to the beach, which is where I'm at today, down this way in Alabama. But he said, you got two weeks, son, to decide if you want to buy this business or I'm going to sell it to this man that's going to offer me more money than what I'm going to tell you that I could sell it to you for. So I had to be a grown man at 20 uh, and decide, hey, do I want to be in this gutter business or do I want to start this stereo shop? which I enjoyed more than the gutter business. Uh, but thankfully I made the choice to do the seamless gutter and stick with it. And uh, we, we grew the business 10 times. Uh, what we were doing when I bought my dad out uh, started going great. Uh, got in the network with people, meet people across the country. I got to meet Tony Cobb in the early 2000s. He's, yeah. He was a great asset to me as yeah, far as guy. helping grow, grow me. I uh, got to meet, uh, a good group of people over at Austin Gutterman in Texas, uh, back in early 2000, uh, of Frazier, Bill Frazier was his name. He passed now, but, uh, he was a great guy's son. I think is running that today, Bobby. Uh, but they gave me a lot of insight on how to run my business. And through the years, I've just gained, uh, friends and, uh, just, I guess you would say mentors, some, some, I mean, as far as, how to run a business and how to be good at it. And uh, today, Corey, uh, Jay is one of my good friends and he's very popular in the gutter industry today. And a lot of people know who he is and he's just an awesome fella. Uh, so I, I, I kind of surround myself with people that I want to be like, and I want to grow to, and that's kind of how you got to do it. So uh, it's very been, a, it's been a fun ride. Yeah. So you bought the yes, business sir. in uh, 96. How long did your dad have the business going? Uh, they started in Alabama in 1976. So when they when I moved down, that's when they started. He did it up in New Jersey as well. They were up in New Jersey, but uh, started in Alabama in 1976. Um, so I bought that uh, the business uh, from him and uh, did a lot of the owner-operator stuff, you know, for years until I got to the point where I thought I could hand it over and let somebody else do the installs. I thought if I did installs, it's going to be right. If somebody else did it, it was going to be wrong. And I had to change my mindset on that to get the growth that we wanted. Was it the same name the whole time? No, sir. No. Uh, we actually, when I bought it, it was uh, B&B 
which is my dad and my granddad, Bob and Bob, uh, ran that for years. And then the economy, remember 08, the economy was real bad, 08, 09. Uh, it got me. You know, I had the story of, you know, we had these employees and we were doing so much contractor work. We were we were catering to the contractors and then the guy fell out, you know, in the home improvement industry, especially for the gutter guys. And I had to let all those people go. I ended up at the end of it. I lost my house, uh, went through a divorce, uh, sold the business to the employees that worked for me for very cheap, uh, which they're still running today. They're doing a great job today oh, wow. on it. Uh, B and B. But, uh, so I, I got burned out and I said, I'm changing careers. So, so in 2010, I jumped from a, a gutter business to a cop. I decided I want to be in law enforcement, which was okay. not a great decision, but made it. Uh, did that for a couple of years and realized I was tired of being broke. And I really had a passion for the seamless gutter business. So I got okay, back I into it. Yep. Yes, sir. Yeah, I got out of it for like a, a year one time, but I ended up back in it. So uh, tell yeah, us. Yeah, I mean, about- and my dad. Go ahead. I was about to say, my dad always said to me since I was little, he said, the only business that's ever made me money, he was in the bar business, the pizza business, the restaurant. He said, the only business that ever made me money has been the gutter business. And it's I believe he's, he's, he's to the point on that. That's true. So now you got Blue Water and you're doing what? You're going to start some franchising? Yeah. So uh, Blue Water was started uh, in 2017. Um, and I, I had a passion always to people. I enjoy this. I made a lot of mistakes through the years. I made more mistakes than I did than non mistakes. But, um, now I'm growing to a point where I fully understand where I went wrong on the thing so I can share that experience. So being that I know the gutter business is a profitable business, I said, why not share that with people? Why not help them? And I know you do your own thing with what you're doing. And there's some other guys doing their own things, which is great for our industry to help grow it. But I wanted to kind of brand Blue Water from the beginning. That was my whole mindset to have Blue Water and brand it to a name where it would be introduced as a gutter and screen enclosures. We do screen enclosures as well as gutters. Okay. And so I started working on that. I've been studying that for 10 years Uh and uh, the last two and a half years, two years roughly, I, I started working on it and hired a consultant team to work me through the whole process. It's been a long road, but we finally got up and going. So as of uh, August 3rd, we are now awarding franchises to people of this year. So we, we're talking to a lot of folks right now. So it's interesting. I'm excited. Awesome, man. So you think you probably have one together by the end of the year or what's your projection? Oh. Yeah, I'm going to definitely work on at least one or two. Uh, you know, my I don't want to grow too fast on that because I want to be able to spend time and help these young entrepreneurs or older entrepreneurs or whatever comes along. And I want to give them the most knowledge and and make sure they're successful. That's the key point to franchising. You got to make sure these people are successful because that's your name for one thing and they're buying into your name. And if you can't make sure you spend, you don't have the hours to spend with them. Our training is 200 hours. So we, we spend 200 hours with them that comes with our franchise. 200 hours. But we'll actually, I'll spend 200 hours. So I'll actually spend more. If they called me up, I'll be like, Hey, I want to talk gutter. Cause I love it. So it's my passion. That's kind of how so I, I grew am. up in it. So I want to, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I love talking about it. I do, I do it for free. If they spent 50 hours, a week with me talking about it. But anyway, so that's kind of, I want to go slow with it back to your point or your question and sure. maybe four within a year and within 10 years, I know we'll have 200 plus units. How does the, how does the 200 hours work? Because that's pretty interesting. I'm, I'd imagine not everyone gets that amount of time uh, when they buy into a franchise. And Well, we, with our uh, consultant team out of Chicago, I franchise are one of the top consultant teams in the country on franchising they do they do all kinds not necessarily as much home improvement like mine uh they saw my model and they saw what i was wanting to accomplish and they said you've got a great model but they helped me get to that point they said you need to structure your training this way this is going to work best for you and your future franchisees so uh they kind of designed that time i kind of told them how we needed to do it as far as the final structure of it 
and we you know we have from our uh, front office training to our field training field training is going to be the most of course okay and then you have your more training you know and then your sales training you know and you definitely need uh, a lot of leadership in that you definitely need if you're going to be in any type of business you need to be a good leader first if you can't be a good leader then you're going to have trouble down the road running a business it's very true it's very true and you got to kind of be a good student to end up becoming a good leader you know yep that's the key you're right tim that's yep. definitely the key you're not, you're not like everybody's designed to be a business owner no, it's not. When I was younger, I used to think everybody could do it, but I don't I don't really think that anymore. I think it's some people wouldn't be happy doing it, you know. Exactly right. What kind of uh, what kind of criteria do you look at uh, for a franchisee? Like what kind of person would be an ideal person to do business with? Well, uh, we have the core values that we follow at, at our uh, Blue Water Corporate. And I'm going to structure it that way. We we definitely want to look for integrity. You know, somebody's got to have integrity. If you don't have integrity, I don't even want to talk to you. I mean, that's that's the four most important thing. You got to make sure they're going to be a good, honest people because that's blue water. I got to make sure that when we have 10, 20, 50, 100 franchises, we got good quality people going out and promoting blue water. If you got some, you know, jack leg or crackhead or whatever doing, you're going to have problems and then your name's going to run down and then where are you going to be at in 10 years you know with your business so i'm gonna be real particular on that but you got to be driven you know you gotta you gotta want to succeed got to be driven you gotta want to be a student to want to learn and be trainable like what you said and some people aren't trainable um not for everything I, I'm learning new stuff every I love knowledge I love to learn stuff I learned so much from you in Orlando when me and you were talking but I mean, just the fact is, if you are close minded, even if a 50 year old bought a franchise unit and they are close minded, that's probably not going to work out for us, you know, as a partnership. So I'm really going to be particular and me having a past experience in law enforcement and being an investigator the last two and a half years of it. I did a lot of interviewing and training. So I'm really going to. You're probably good at judging people, people from that. So that probably is going to work out great for you that you had that little bit of experience. Huh? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it definitely is going to help. Yep. Yeah. yeah, cops know when you're lying to them. <laughs> <laughs> Most of the time, I've been. Hey, I had one lady one time. I thought I I believed everything she said. She she'd stolen some stuff for Valentine's for her kids at uh, yeah. Walgreens, and I had to arrest her. And I told her, I said, "Don't do this again. Don't do this." Again. She she was crying, saying, "I wouldn't do this again." And a week later, she was arrested for stealing somewhere else. And I was like, "I thought I had it figured <laughs> out." So. She tricked. She had me trick fooled for sure. So. Yeah, my, my approach anytime I got pulled over was just be honest. Like, do you know what you did? Yeah, I ran the red light. You know, and I usually, you know, <laughs> usually warn yeah. you then. <laughs> you know. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, be honest with them for sure. So honest integrity. Yeah, that, that's definitely huge. Um, I couldn't imagine wanting to go into business with someone that didn't have that. So, um, what are some uh? lessons learned or some advice that you could give us for the 20 year or the 30 years experience you've had man that could go on for hours tim um it's like one I, just I'm, one thing that th that sticks out just one one good little point uh probably number one for a business owner probably more than anything would be uh leadership you you got to be a you got to learn how to become a good leader. I I'm just I'm still learning. I'm in the process. I want to be better and better every day. Um, I've got a great team of people that work with us at Blue Water Corporate and uh, the Blue Water franchising side. We're growing that as well. But the leadership is probably the most important skill you can have as an entrepreneur uh, and learn how to be able to talk to people the right way. You know how to hire the right people. You know and and how to build business plans. And just have that leadership ability to do that. But ab above and beyond that, probably the second would be knowing your numbers. If you run a business and you don't know your numbers and don't understand cash flow, don't understand your income statement, your P&L, or your balance sheet, you know, if you don't know those, you're going to be in a world of hurt when you grow to a level where money comes in and out so fast. And you think you've got money being the owner operator, and you say, "Oh, I got five thousand or ten thousand in the bank or a hundred thousand, 
And then you don't realize you got 200,000 worth of bills uh, on accounts payable through your material. And that's where most businesses fail. Four out of five businesses fail nationally, probably maybe even be more than that nowadays with everything going on. But uh, you got to know your numbers, man. If you don't know that, and I'm, I've never been, I'm not saying I'm great at it. I'm way better than I was 20 years ago, uh, or I wouldn't have went out of business 20 years ago. I'd have figured out how to redirect. I didn't go out of business. I sold a business, but that's the same thing. But you got to know your numbers. Got to know it for sure. Yeah, no, I agree with that. It's uh, it's kind of hard to make a decision when you don't, you know, you don't know what's actually going on, right? Yeah, just because you got money in a bank don't mean you got money, you know. No. <laughs> <laughs> yep. No, but I think we've all learned that lesson the hard way a time or two. Yes, and, sir. You know, that's the thing. Like, you know, the growth mindset, like you're saying, you know, it's all right to make those mistakes, but just kind of be reflective of them. And you know, you're growing and you're learning. I'm still growing and learning. I know that. Yep. I learn every day. I mean, since I sold my company, I've learned so much that I'm like, man, I wish I knew that then, you know, it, it happens. And and that's age and experience. And, and as long as you're receptive to open-minded stuff and, and learn, I get so much every day. I listen to podcasts. I, I'm in the financial podcast now, and I used to not mm -hmm. be, and that's kind of probably sounds weird to some people, but I, it makes me better understand how money works and things work and the economy works and all that stuff. What I do with the podcast, because I listen to a lot of them too, I kind of like, because it's hard right, to get into the habit of it. So you kind of got to, I, I attach it to something. So I attach it to when I go to the gym. So when I go to the gym, I have my yeah. ear caught on and that's why I'm going to listen to podcasts. And I think that's important that you're constantly feeding yourself knowledge and you know, you can never stop learning. Yep. And stay out of the news. Don't don't listen to the news. Listen to a podcast. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, the news, man. I, I haven't watched the TV in, I don't know, it's been about three or four years since I've turned on my TV. Like, every now and then I'll watch a movie, my girlfriend or something. But other than that, you know. It's same. That's there. the same. Yep. No, yep. they're actually there. It's starting to where YouTube is taking over Netflix because you know, like on the smart TVs, they have the YouTube channel. Yeah, they, they've starting to take over Netflix. More people are watching YouTube than they're watching Netflix right now. It's crazy. And, and, and then the red, you know, when I was younger, we had the uh Blockbuster, and you uh -huh. probably remember that. You remember I do. Blockbuster? No. I do. Now that's it's gone. Looking, uh, then Redbox. And now Redbox is gone. Netflix took Redbox over. And now Netflix is going. YouTube's taking it over. It's crazy how it changed. Speaking of changes, um, what are some changes that you're kind of seeing in the gutter industry that you kind of feel like what direction it's going? Um, it is changing, you know. Um, our leads overall. Uh, for the gutter window and screen side that we do uh, have have changed. We've we've had to work harder to get them. Uh, we've had to kind of more uh, target marketing, more down to a, a certain target demographics of people. We don't do the shotgun approach anymore. Uh, right. We got to kind of nourish them more. We got to go back and sometimes we do more follow ups than we would kind of like to do you know, mm -hmm. to try to make sure we can close that sale. Uh, we have, you know, it's just a different economy and we have to offer financing to everybody. You don't expect somebody just to have four or five, six thousand, ten, twenty thousand dollars in their bank account. You have to show that, hey, we have financing available for our customer and let them know that. And don't be embarrassed about that because sometimes customers don't want to talk about it. And then if you're project consultants or salesmen, they don't want to talk about it. Cause they are like, I don't want to ask that person. Cause they got a Corvette in the driveway there. They, they don't, they don't even, money. a lot of them don't even know that this is a possibility just because no one's speaking up is what you're saying. Yeah. yeah. Yes. So we definitely have, we've had to change to do more of that because we're in a retirement town here in Foley. Uh, we're at the beach, you know, area. So there's a lot of retirees from up North moving down here. But there's still people that need money that, that don't want to, they might have in their retirement and they might want to finance 20 grand. So that makes sense. Do you, do you kind of feel like that? I was talking to Grant the other day and he was kind of saying that he thinks the economy is weakening a little bit and the gutter industry as a whole is slowing down. 
Do you think it's uh that's the I, case? I feel, I feel it too in our area. Um, I feel a difference. I, and I've got a couple friends in Arizona and Minnesota and Chicago and all. And they've told me some similar stories to what we're talking about. Uh, we're probably, I think, on average right now, maybe 15, 20% down on our leads that are coming through. And that's because we were so used to the COVID leads. You know, the mm -hmm. COVID leads were up there. I'm not tracking the leads. I need to go back and do that pre-COVID and see how those compared to oh. what's happening now. And we might be similar then. And if we're similar and we're tracking maybe a little bit better than pre-COVID, then we're we're doing pretty good because the COVID was not a normal time for us. It might have just been all that printed money out there floating around that made COVID so busy, you know? <laughs> That's what it was, man. I tell you, we we had a hurricane here that came here. We had the COVID. So, I mean, we were turning more leads down than we could get to at that time. And it was kind of like, It'd be nice to have that back today. <laughs> I know. <laughs> yeah, that's very true. So, yeah, I guess, you know, when things tighten up like this, we got to just get more efficient, right? And just, like you said, do more follow-ups. And that's probably the good thing about uh, your franchise. You kind of have all these systems in place that you're going to plug people into that's going to help them do that. Yes, sir. That's correct. Yep. So what are what are your goals for uh, Blue Water? Like Blue, Blue Water Corporate, the one that we're in now, not the franchise side. Um, my goal is to grow twenty to thirty percent every year. Um, since I've been in business all the years of myself, there's only two years that I didn't have a growth year. So uh, so all those years, just two years, I didn't have growth. But Twenty to thirty percent is about all you want to do. If some people say, "Hey, I grew fifty percent, I grew seventy percent," you have a lot of issues when you grow that fast. A hundred percent, but a twenty to thirty percent growth in in our industry, uh, what we do, is not too bad. It's so pretty we, big. Uh, yeah, and I I think we can keep accomplishing that when we structure our people right and get more efficient on certain pro uh, things that we're doing to constantly grow at a 20 or 30% for the next 10, 15 years. So we got a lot of cool stuff going on. We're going to add some more products down the line that I've been working on since day one that I haven't. Uh, I like to diversify. I, I love the gutter business, and I still think that you can't go wrong in the gutter business. And the screen business for the back patios go, go hand in hand with the gutter business. It kind of flows yeah. together. But there's some other products that we're going to be doing that's going to flow together with it. So diver diversification is going to be great for uh, an exterior home improvement guy, for sure. Do you guys have um, screen enclosures there, like in Florida, or is it just mainly doing patios? No, we, we do the pool and eyes. We go over to pools with it, too, just okay. like what y'all have in your area. Yeah. Uh, so the, we, we have a lot of those projects. And, you know, they'll run – a uh, good pool and I'll run 30 K for a pool and I, you know, yeah. so it's not, it's not a 3000 average gutter job. 30 grand is a lot of money. So you, normally you definitely need to have financing ready for somebody so they can do the 0% and pull the trigger, you know, but uh, they take longer. They're more complicated. You got to get engineering, you got to get permits and all that. It's not an in and out like gutter, but uh, it's, it's fun after it's done. It looks to see the final product looks great. Yeah, I bet the people love it too, because then they could go out on their patio. Um, what's yeah, uh, no bug. How long does one of those take, other than getting the permits and everything? Like, say, when you start and finish a job. Uh, yeah, well, that if we had material in our warehouse, uh, they'll take uh, the guys three to five working days to put one up. You know, okay. yeah, uh, just depends on on the the difficulty of it, and the angles, and where it's located, and the height, and all of that. But three to what five working using? days. Three or four man crew. Uh, most of the pool and I crews are uh two man, two sometimes three man. So three man. we don't. Yeah, they're. I got some. I got some great employees. We don't sub anything out here in my area. I do everything W two employees. We don't. I'm just not a big on subbing. So a lot of companies are uh in in our industry. I just don't do it. I didn't like it either. It kind of takes a lot of the yeah. control away. 
Yeah, it does. And me being a past law enforcement, if I was to get to subbing and I had a guy that came to somebody's home and he was a felon that, I mean, and there's nothing wrong with felons, you know, but if he's a felon, it's still got that, hey, I want to steal this. I want to be like this. And, you know, and then I don't know about it or a child molester and, and I don't know yeah. about it. It's just not good for the business. You know what I mean? I do. That's my opinion, though. I mean, everybody's got different on that. Yeah, I wasn't big on subs. What about uh, the franchise side of things? What's, what's kind of like your projection on that? Or your goals? Or uh, Well, man, we got a lot of cool stuff going on with that. Um, we're, my goals really is to get to 200 units. Uh, I know I can do it. I would love to come in a big auditorium or a room and have all these franchise owners making their own money, their own schedule, buying what they want to buy, having a good life, you know, and not working a nine to five where they're just stressed making $15 an hour. And they come to me and say, Hey, we're able to go to Bobby's baseball game. We're able to do this, do that and see that that that's gonna, that's the most exciting thing that's what i'm ex- waiting for and i know it's going to happen one day and that's just gonna that's that's what it's all about for me I, I like that about the franchise models because you know like when i first started my business it was just you know i, I had, actually i didn't have a truck i had a trailer and a machine and i had to borrow a truck to, to get going the first six months one day a week but you know, you don't have everything organized. So it was like two years of just trying to, you know, be the office person, the salesman, the installer, you know, the marketing guy, you know, do everything. And you just, it takes so long to get it under control. I felt like I was working 60, 70 hours a week and you don't have any work-life balance, but if you could plug into something and you already got the systems together, it seems like it'd be easier to achieve that. Yeah, way easier. You know, mo- most franchise businesses last. Most of the four about four to five that fail are non-franchise. Uh, so you got a lot better success rate having a franchise business because most of the time the structure and what they went through, they've they've cut it down. They cut all the fat out and it's all all the lean part. Give it to you. Say this is the way. If you run it this way, which every territory is going to be a little different. But right. if you run it this way, you're bound to make some good money, you know, and if you scale off of what you're supposed to do on your SOP manuals, then there's a chance you're not going to make it and you're going to fail. So I never thought that about that. Happen. So I guess there's like a statistic that kind of shows that they're more, more successful. huh? I mean, it, make, it makes franchise sense. businesses. Yeah. Like the mom and pop. Uh, if you had a mom and pop hamburger store, you're not going to be able to compete with the McDonald's. It's already figured out how to do everything, be efficient, buy the product at the cheapest price. I'm not saying I support McDonald's, but you know what I yeah. mean? They're, they, they know how to run a business as far as the structure of it. They know they're, they're dialed in on that. They do. They don't even have the best burgers, but they got the best systems. They used to. Now it takes, if you go through, I don't eat it anymore, but if you go through McDonald's, it takes, like 10 minutes to get I was I carried my daughter through it the other day I guess two months ago and I'm like 10 minutes to get a burger that's ridiculous <laughs> this isn't fast food anymore you know who's really good uh Chick-fil-a is good I don't eat it that often but they get you in and out they should run the government you know no kid. and Chick-fil-a is uh is awesome in our area and I know the owner done some work for him, and he's a good guy. And they've got good people there too. They just hire a different. Uh, they they hire the A players for the uh, uh, fast food industry, and that and that's a good secret. Just get keep the A players rolling in. Don't hire the D and the C, or maybe you can get a B player and and train them up the right way. But they go after the the quality. That's what I like. What is your approach on hiring top you know top talent? Guys with integrity. Wow, that that is, that, yeah, that is a tough uh, subject. But um, to me, I actually being past law enforcement, it's going to make me more difficult for me to hire people because I I try to see through them. But I recruit every day, every day of the week, and since I own Blue Water Exteriors Corporate, every day I'm looking to hire A players. I look for their attitude, 
and their drive first. I don't care. Like if somebody called me and they say, Hey, I got 20 years experience, but I can't work with anybody because I've got a bad attitude. I'm not, I don't, I'm not hiring them. They're, I'm just going to move on past them. I it's want funny somebody how, that wants. It's funny how some of them will straight up tell you that too. <laughs> yeah. It's crazy. I used to have them. I'm not saying that I've never had them. And if I, sometimes we get some bad apples here and there, and they're like a cancer, you got to get rid of them. But, um, man, I've had over 250 employees probably in my life since I've had my businesses. And uh, and I I thought that sometime I had the best guys and, and, and gals, and they disappointed me. And then other times, some that were just barely moving along ended up being some of the best people. So it's, that's a tough that's a tough subject. Do you prefer to train or do you tr prefer to find someone who already knows what they're doing? I train everybody, you know, nowadays train, train everybody nowadays from you're going to have to put a training center at your facility. You're going to have to be able to train them and have a structure. Like you can't just say, Hey, go get on that truck and learn it and watch and go do it. You're going to have to have a program put together for your field supervisors or whatever you have supervisors out there and say, Hey, we got to go through this training. Cause we, you know, we have apprentice install technician and then field supervisor. We have a trainer they're trainees first. So we have our programs set up and then they have to pass each section. So I, I love to train these guys. That's what I like. You, Tony was telling me he has levels for his guys. Do you kind of do like the same thing? I do. We have different levels. So they're, his is a little different than ours, but ours is pay structure levels. And the apprentice uh, does not have the experience experience that an install technician has so yeah they are different levels so and they're great and and then i get to move up the ladder so yeah we started that about three years ago two three years ago and it's been a good thing uh because have you, you don't want to difference? pay somebody oh huge and we're still implementing better things to make it better we still got a long ways to go tim it's not like we got it figured out to a t today we're constantly trying to make it better that way we can share with our franchisees as far as, hey, this is going to be the best route to go. It's going to take a little bit longer. Yes, it'd be nice to be an owner-operator to have this guy that can come and do hand-cut miners and do everything you want him to do. But you're probably going to have a problem, or he's either going to go out on his own, he's going to make your customers mad, or something. So you got to hire for attitude. No, I agree. Hire for culture. Yeah. yeah, there's nothing worse than the uh, crew with a bad attitude and the other guys, you know, it, kill, it kills everything. Yeah, I've seen it over the years. I've been it's con it's contagious. Yep, it is. It sure is. So anyone that wants to work with you and kind of, you know, get into a franchise, how, how could they do that? Um, we're online. We're on a web at uh, bluewaterfranchising.com is, is how they can do that. They can call uh, our franchising number is 251-202-9405, or they can uh, go to our Blue Water Corporate website and click on the franchise button at the top and kind of go that way. So uh, they're welcome to contact me. That 202 comes to me directly. I enjoy talking to people. You know, I definitely, if I feel somebody's not a fit, I'm going to shoot them in the right direction. I don't want, I don't want to waste somebody's time. You know, I don't, I don't, I'm not trying to just get numbers, you know, just to have franchisees because of course I'm going to make money off of uh, what they install, but I want to have the right people. So I'm definitely going to shoot them in the right direction. Do you, uh, does the area matter to you? Like what areas you get into? Do you have to like do research on this is a good area? Uh, we actually, a good area? Yeah, we have a mapping company and it does uh, territories and mapping. And we're actually, uh, we're going to build them out by the households and all that. So if somebody's interested in a territory, they can contact me and we can work that out on the territory. But uh, we're going to stay in the Southeast. Uh, we're going to stay near home, near where we're at and work outside. We're going to have Alabama you know, saturated and, and top of Florida and all that, uh, because that's just what fits better with blue water right now. Uh, we'll probably get up in uh, Tennessee and Texas for sure. We will be out in Texas. Uh, stay. I'm going to stay away from California right now. I don't have any 
I would never any do it. intentions <laughs> hitting California. That's just not a state that I want. So, Excellent. but uh, we're we're excited for this for sure. I like Tennessee. I think Tennessee'd be a nice area for. It. I used to uh, work Knoxville. Knoxville, it probably yeah. pretty weather. The season's changing, and then you know the gutter guard industry is probably strong in Knoxville. Real strong. Every single job we did had gutter guard on it. You know that's not really the case that's in Florida. The yeah, same here. It's not really the case here, but strong profit margins are in the gutter in the gutter guard industry for sure. Yeah, very strong. I'm actually surprised how pricey some of them get. Yeah, I know. You know, it, it kind of gets out of hand where it goes. Um, we try to set our prices fair. At the end of the day, we're out to make money. Your businesses have to make money, but we got a certain percentage we want to make at. And we don't, you know, we have a price book that's already set. We don't just go out there and price jobs, look at them and say, hey, we can get five grand for this job. And we normally would have done it for three just because they're driving a Porsche or if they've got some fancy backyard. I kind of keep it the same and, and that's yeah, that's the system. Yeah. That's integrity, you know, and that's the way we run. I agree. Good deal, man. <clears throat> so what's next? Wow. I mean, I'm I'm getting close to 50, Tim, and I sit here and think I have more energy now than I had in my 30s, and it's kind of crazy. And I think I love the game of business. I love I I'm so energetic about learning new stuff with businesses and and just trying to help people now more. I'm thankful that I've got some experience where I can help people, and that that's what kind of gets me going every day is wanting to help people. So if somebody comes to me and say, hey, I need some help, and they might be in the heating and cooling business, and they say, hey, what's your thoughts on this? And I blow their ears up with me talking 100 miles an hour. I just love stuff like that. But but down the road, I hope that I can maybe get time where we can uh, acquire more businesses uh, outside of our gutter industry that we do, maybe acquisitions for maybe heating and cooling, maybe plumbing, maybe, you know, solar panel uh uh, companies stuff like that maybe solar farms i don't know you know i'm always going to be an entrepreneur i got the bug in me this is what i grew up my dad got me doing it young i was giving estimates at 16 so he he, he 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 messed up <laughs> <doing that>. so <laughs> i i don't think i'll retire i'll always be doing something i just enjoy the game of business i was actually telling someone that earlier today i couldn't fathom retiring what are you going to do like yeah, their own yeah. most side. people that retired die. Yeah. yeah like i when i when i sold the company i was so bored for the first two months i just had to get something going <laughs> right away you know <laughs> but were you were you doing a good thing trying trying to help uh the young entrepreneurs grow the gutter business that is huge and with your knowledge and your success you had that's great that you're doing that. And I know, I know, I'm sure I can see it in your face when you're able to help somebody, how it makes you feel. So that's awesome. So Yeah, no, I love it. It's just picking the right person. If they can. I guess I just have a passion for it. I don't know. It's just, I can't help myself. I just, you know what I mean? It's love helping people. Hey, that's good though, man. We, ne we need more, more people like you and like that in the, in the industry for sure, especially this industry, because it's kind of been, you know, the contractor, bad, not necessarily bad name, but just needs a lot more help for sure. It seems like the past few years with the groups emerging and it seems like the community is kind of coming together and people are working more together and learning. Yeah. From each other. Yeah. I think it's evolving pretty fast. Yeah, yeah. It, it is. And I think the Internet had a lot to do with that. And maybe our gutter industry in general, we were behind times on the Internet and marketing and all of that. Now we're getting on board all of us getting on board and we're like, Oh, we got to do that. Just like the heating and cooling companies, just like the plumbing companies have been doing for 20 years. And we got to step it up. Maybe we'll have a, a certification program one day going on. I know some people are talking about that and that would be cool to have. So we don't have just a chuck in the truck that's going to go throw some gutter up from an old lady and, and mess her house up. You know, we want it done right for sure. Yeah, we need standards. Do you have any codes whatsoever in your state for gutter or not really? 
not gutter. Don't even have to pull a permit. Uh, most home builders don't put gutter on in this area. Uh, so most of our work is residential homeowners, and which is what I like. Uh, got in trouble having contractors back in the 08 range, but um, but there's no standards here, not now. And that's what I tell a lot of people day, about. I, don't... I tell a lot of people it's a bad model to only have contractors because I remember that in 08. Every single co company that was just like mostly reliant on contractors went out of business. This is just all their work all yeah. right up. They had no yep. name built, no reputation, no one knew them. Uh, you know, home, no homeowners telling them, hey, this is who does my gutters. Yep. You know, it, it's, not, it's not a great model. And and you're at the mercy of the contractors a lot of times that, hey, I want you to come finish this job so we can get this closed. And they're, they're not done with the post. And you got to go back and put the downspouts on. And you're like, man, I took two trips. Plus, I did it for this cost. And I'm not making any money already because I'm trying to keep this contractor happy. It's just a vicious cycle. Uh, so less than 10% of our our revenue is contractors, less than 10 now. And, you know, years ago, I had a guy tell me, if you let any one business, like if somebody's, you know, a customer and they get more than 20% of your, you know, your business, then, then you know, you're, you're if they fail, you're going to be in trouble. Like I know some people that that's all they do is work for one company. And if they go out of business, then they're done, you know. Yeah, no, it's horrible. I, I was about scary. the same place, about 10%. Um, you know, I had my ones that I took care of, but I just, I didn't really ever market to them that much. I just focused it on homeowners and you would pick up builders and contractors because they're going to find you on the internet. But to make my model all contractors, that this, that's pretty scary. It is. Um I'll say this, I had this one contractor reach out and we did, a, we're doing a big project for them. Uh, and it turned out, but it's, it's for a contractor and they found us and it's probably the biggest residential job I've done the whole time I've been in business my whole life. And it's really a lot of lead coated copper and we keep adding and adding and we're doing more to it. They've got a field house at this house. They got a pool house. They got a pump house. They got a, uh, uh, the house itself. So we keep adding to it. So it's a, a massive lead coated copper half round job. So I'm thankful for that one contractor, but they do quality work. They're not building a little slab house and running them a hundred at a time. They're building custom three, four year projects to build one okay. home. Well, what's the reason for the copper leaded or the leaded, leaded coated? I don't know. I don't really understand that. Uh, the architect wanted that. And I'm not, I'm not a big fan of the lead like coated match copper. The roof or... I, yeah, the roof had it, and then uh, it's just what he the architect had in New Orleans where oh, they, they, had, were they from, had it on the roof uh, where they drew. they had a lead yeah the roof not 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 the house but the pool house was all lead coated copper roof part of the wow. house had it on there some some of the field house I mean this is. This home will probably look to be a thirty million dollar project, uh, not not the gutters, but the house itself. Yeah. So, uh, so, but you know, I'm I'm happy to do it. Yeah, I would be too. I didn't I didn't run into any of that. I did a lot of copper. We were doing copper pretty much. I would get like two, three copper jobs a month, but never ran into any leaded. Yeah, that this is actually one. I this might be my first lead coated copper job that we've done. Uh, of course, we. You know, solder all the joints and all, but as far as copper in general, my dad and granddad did it years ago, and I did it my whole life. And copper is normal. It, we do less and less copper now than we did 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. Seems like it's not as popular. You know, it's kind of like a fad, really. I mean, it's good for, you know, upping the price on the job and all, but, you know, most time you can't use it if you got aluminum drip edge because of electrolysis, you know, you can't mix the copper and aluminum. So contractors don't know that. No, we did it a lot because of the uh, ocean water. So a lot of the, uh, the salt just kind of eats through the gutters. So aluminum would only have like five years. So it had to go with copper, but a lot of that down here, there's a lot of slanted fascia and they have like one by two with the drip edge over top of it. So we wouldn't have to touch it because we'd be mounting to the uh, the fascia. 
Okay. Yeah. And that that yeah. space or kept the water going in the gutter or nothing getting behind it. So um, well, then, then you're good. And I, you know, I don't know the whole process of how electrolysis works. I just know that our supplier years ago scared me and I'm like, I don't want to get involved with a big copper job and have it get ate up having it. Well, touching the, the problem water, is, so is just, it's going to, the electrolysis isn't going to happen to the copper. It's going to happen to the aluminum, right? So if they have the aluminum drip edge, you're, you're ruining your gutters are fine, but you're ruining the roof. You then know? you got to pull the shingles up to fix the flash, the drip edge. So yeah. Yeah. yeah that big expensive project. How much copper do you do like throughout the year? Do you think? Man, very, very little. We don't market it, honestly. You know, okay. um, I, I haven't really, I mean, that people see our pictures and our stuff, but we don't really push it. Um, I might push it a little more, especially having this big project under our belt here. Uh, it might get some people looking at it saying, I really like that look of that home. And we might we might get more projects going forward. And I don't mind uh, marketing copper. You know, it's going to be a very small market too. You got to find that target. It I mean, is. It's going to be very small. So, but uh, I I don't mind marketing. We're going to keep talking about it at least. See what happens. You guys, you guys do half round much over there, or is it mostly just? Yeah, we uh. I uh, it was K style. Uh, we're the only half round machine around here. Um, I like half round for the most part. Uh, on big roofs, I don't think it handles the water to six inch K does. Uh, so mm -hmm. if if it's a integrity issue, and I know the gutter's not gonna work, we'll make sure that we've got the K style. Even if the customer wants half round, I'm not gonna put half round on their house and know it's not gonna work. So. But uh, we probably do 25% half round, 20%, really? and then the rest is okay, yeah. That's actually yeah. a lot. Yeah, that's a lot, actually. Yeah, yeah. And, and you know, and that's going by the revenue, you know, because the, right. the half round. I mean, yeah, you, get high, you get higher revenue on it. That's kind of why I got into it more. I was looking for the higher margins. Yeah, it's a little better. Uh, and, and it's not hard. I, I actually like the look of it, um, but like I said, if it's, if it looks like it's not going to work for the roof pitch, the volume of roof, and and after we get it all drawn out, we'll definitely stay clear of the half round and put the K on. So, good deal, man. Well, it was nice having you on here, man. I'm glad you got to join me. And uh, man, I think people are going to glad get to be on here out of this. I hope so. I appreciate you and everything you do, Tim, and thank you for uh saying hey get on my podcast let's talk gutter shop i really appreciate you doing that and it's even it's even better getting to meet you and kind of you know getting to talk to you in nashville a couple of weeks so i guess it's been a month ago already hadn't it month already yeah Jeez. we talked on the panel together and then you know we went to the uh, rooftop and you know we got to spend some time together we had fun um yeah we did yeah who's that guy gonna... jim jim gotta quit that what he <laughs> passing out drinks Oh yeah, that was that was a that was that was a night for me. I don't usually drink, so here I am, like yeah. here, drink, drink. <laughs> I know we were that tequila was going down fast. My wife started taking it away from me because she knew where I was heading. I felt bad for my Uber driver. <laughs> so. so, hey, they I bet they're used to it, in Nashville. Yeah, yeah, that town's hopping all, all the time. Uh, yeah, I had it fun. Is. It's uh, yeah. it's important to get up there and network with people and meet people so i was glad i got to meet you and tony and a bunch of other guys and yeah it was fun so. yeah that's one that's one thing i want to say before we go that's the number one thing i would say that helps grow your business is get out there and network with people just go go to the uh not necessarily the b and i but if you got chamber events in your area if you're a young owner operator guy and you want to you want to get to uh networking with people that's going to be the key to your success is networking and, and building relationships i did that when i've met tony and then all the people through the gutter industry and now i've i've got you i've met and we're going to stay in contact and there's no telling what's going to happen next 20 years what we're going to be involved with together or separate or whatever absolutely i mean so, so that's 
So it's good to network. And a lot of people try to hide. And if you if you're in business and you hide, you're gonna have a lot more problems trying to get ahead. You got to get out there and network. And just networking when you're networking with people that are doing the same thing you're doing, and a lot of these people are doing on a hot, you know, a way bigger level, it makes you level up. You just being around those people, you're gonna start leveling up. You're gonna start thinking different, you know. You're like the five people you're around the most, right? Yeah, that's true, man. I definitely don't want to hang out at the bottom with people that want to go hang out at the bars every day and, no. and always mad at the world and they're watching the news and complaining about there's no money or this and that. You got to get around people that are successful. Yep. So that's, that's a right. great thing. So. All right, Jimmy, man, it was nice having you on here. I'll let everyone go. Um, definitely hit yeah, him thanks, up if you're looking to get a franchise. Definitely, you know, you want to go with someone with integrity, someone with the systems. He's third generation. I don't think there's anyone better to get involved with. And, you know, 200 hours of training, that's pretty huge. So, yeah. So, thanks again for having me on the show, Tim. I appreciate your time as well. Thanks, Jimmy. I'll talk to you. Talk to you soon. All right. See ya.